Welcome back to Hannity. So on Saturday, the First Lady Melania Trump, she started the president's rally by reciting the Lord's Prayer. Watch this. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the crowd erupted in applause when the First Lady finished reciting the prayer. But she was heavily criticized on social media and elsewhere. Joining us now with reaction, the president of Liberty University, Jerry Falwell Jr., and from Samaritan's Purse, Franklin Graham. So, first of all, I'm reading the, the comments about this. She got accused of plagiarizing by reciting the Lord's Prayer. All right, we all then are guilty of plagiarism by reciting this prayer. And, you know, then they called it a dictatorship, and then some said, well, she was reading. She didn't look like she was reading. She looked like she was bowing her head to me. And I'm thinking, as far as I know, Reverend Graham, isn't this a Judeo-Christian country founded on Judeo-Christian principles? Uh, Sean, you're right. And listen, when, uh, when Melania did this, I thought to myself, this is the first time in American history of politics, as far as I know, where the First Lady uh, stood and, and recited the Lord's Prayer before she introduced her husband. I thought it was tremendous. And it, it resonated, Sean, with not only millions of Christians here across this country, but also uh, around the world. I'm talking about Christians uh, halfway around the world that saw that. Uh, that, that encouraged them to think that the First Lady would, would recite a prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ gave. And here she is reciting it before the whole world. I was so proud of her, and I just, uh, I just couldn't stop talking about it. I thought it was tremendous. And so um, I'm proud of her. I'm as proud as I can be of our First Lady. She's such a fine person. And, of course, the left is going to attack. And, Sean, they're going to do everything they can to try to beat up uh, our president and, and uh, his wife, the First Lady, his children. They're, they're going after everybody. But there's millions and millions of Christians out there that uh, stood behind uh, of President Trump, and they're going to continue to stand behind him. And I just hope he keeps going forward. I, I certainly hope that the First Lady is not discouraged because of uh, the left uh, who want to try to, yeah. to embarrass her some way. But she did a great job, Sean, a fabulous job. You know, uh, President Fowell, I I've known you a lot of years, and I've been at a convocation when you, when your dad ran Liberty University. I've been when, since you run Liberty University. By the way, I am not the Christian that either you or Franklin are, and and your father knew it. That's why I used to call and say he's praying for me. He must have known instinctively I need a lot more help than you guys. But I thought it was a really touching, beautiful moment, and it was sincere. And a lot of people don't know, I've met Melania. She's lovely. She's kind. She's a great mom. She's a great support yeah, to the president. Right. Uh, English is not her first, second, third, or fourth. It's her fifth language. She's amazingly smart. And I just like, really, we're going we're gonna to attack the 10-year-old kid, and then we're going to attack uh, Ivanka. We're attacking girls and the wife of the president. That's how desperate these people are? Well, she, she, I thought she was so classy, and she, it was such a classy thing to do. I agree with, with Franklin 100%. And, you know, this, this is tradition in American history. Franklin prayed at the, inaugural, at the inauguration. I read the scripture that contains the Lord's Prayer at the private service, which has been a, a, right before the inauguration, which has been a tradition for generations for all new presidents. And it's such a perversion of the idea of separation of church and state, what our founders meant by that that the judicial activists have, have created in this century. And I know I live right here in Virginia. My family's lived here since before the Revolutionary War. Thomas Jefferson's farm is a few farms over from mine. And he, I'll tell you what he meant by separation of church and state. At that time, the Virginia colony was under the British throne, and every single citizen was required to be a member of the Anglican Church and to pay tithes to the Anglican Church. Well, the only problem with that is the king appointed the archbishop so the king controlled the church, bought up much of the land in Virginia, and after the revolution, Thomas Jefferson was determined to never let the church be used by the state 
to control the people again. That, that's what he meant by separation of church and state. All right, thanks for joining me.